In this video, I'm going to walk you through assembling and analyzing PacBio Amplicon resequencing data using Seekman Engine. The data set I'm going to use for this demonstration consists of 48 amplicons for the cancer genes EGFR and MET. These amplicons were generated using the Fluidime EGFR gene panel and Fluidime's access array, and then sequenced using the PacBio RS system. So to set up my assembly in Seekman Engine, I select Create New Assembly Project, and then click Next. For project type, I want to choose Targeted Resequencing, and then click Next. And I'm going to leave the assembly type set to Templated Assembly Normal Workflows, and then click Next. Now I need to name my project and choose a project folder to which to save my files. I already have a folder set up for that purpose, so I'll choose that, and then click Next. Now I need to input my template files, and in this example, I'm going to be using a FASTA file that contains sequences for the exons in both the EGFR and MET genes. So I click Add, select my file, and then click Next. The next step is to input my sequence data. The first thing I need to do is to select the read technology, which in this case is PacBio. Then click Add next to the Setup Unpaired Reads box. Navigate to my files and click Open. And as you can see, I'm adding data for multiple samples. And since I'm interested in multi-sample SNP analysis, I'm going to check the box next to Multiplex Data and then click Customize Sample Names. Here I can specify which samples correspond to which files simply by double-clicking on the file name and then typing in the sample name. I do this for each file. And then click OK. And now that my samples are set up, I click Next. The next page gives me some options to adjust various assembly parameters. However, Seekman Engine has already optimized these settings for a PacBio Amplicon resequencing project. So I'm not going to change any of these settings right now. Instead, I'll just click Next. And now my assembly is ready to begin. All I have to do is click Assemble. Once my assembly is complete, I'm going to click Next to proceed to the project report, which contains details about the completed assembly. I can review this report now, or I can export it for later reference. The next step is to open the finished assembly in Seekman Pro. To do this, I simply click Launch in Seekman. Now I have my finished assembly open in Seekman Pro, and the first thing I see is the project summary window, which contains a list of all the contigs assembled in my project. I can sort this list by name, contig length, and number of sequences in the contig. As you can see, each contig in this assembly corresponds to a single exon in either the EGFR or MET gene. If I want to look at any of these contigs in more detail, I just double click the contig name, and that opens the alignment view for that contig. And because I set this up as a multi-sample assembly, Seekman has grouped the reads for each sample under a consensus for that sample. So to hide the reads for a sample, I just click the arrow to the left of the sample name, and then I can see the reads for the next sample. And if I want to hide those, I just click the arrow again. And now I can compare the consensus sequence for each sample to my reference sequence. To see a graphical representation of the assembly for this contig, I select Contig Strategy View. This view shows a graph representing depth of coverage along the exon. To see a list of SNPs in my project, I'm going to go back to the Project Summary window, scroll up and select Unlocated Contigs so all contigs are included, and then go to SNP, SNP Report. Because this is a fairly deep assembly, I've already filtered my SNP report to only show SNPs that occur at a 30% frequency or higher. Depending on your data, you may also wish to use some of the other available filters to trim down your list. I can also sort this view by various columns including sample name, contig name, contig or reference position, type, or depth. And I'm going to sort this by name. And now I can see that there are 11 SNPs in sample 1 and 3 SNPs in sample 2. 
And these are the very same SNPs that were found by PacBio and confirmed using Sanger sequencing for these samples. If I want to look at an individual SNP in more detail, I just double click the SNP name and that opens the alignment view for that SNP. And here I can see that this particular SNP is heterozygous in sample 2 and also in sample 1. If you have a larger data set and you want to compare SNPs across large groups of samples, the next step would be to export your data to ArraySTAR for further analysis. If you'd like to learn more about that, I will provide a link at the end of this video to another video that demonstrates that workflow. If you have further questions about assembling or analyzing data from the PacBio RS system, or any other questions about our software, please visit our website at dnastar.com or contact us at support at dnastar.com.